Hello, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're gonna be talking about my top 10 makeup purchases of 2024 so far. So we are now in the middle of April and I feel like I've somehow tried a ton of makeup this year. I've really stepped up the whole reviewing new makeup thing. It's just, it's what I love the most. So I've really been loving that, but with that comes a ton of new products. And I decided to narrow it down to my top 10 favorites so far. I've tried some really incredible products that I have been absolutely loving. And so I challenged myself to figure out the very top 10, but let's just hop right into it. The very first product I have to mention is the Dior Forever Glow Star Filter. I have been raving about this product. This is such a beautiful, beautiful product. This is like the Dior alternative to the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. I feel like personally Dior did it better and I am the biggest Charlotte Tilbury fan. So if I'm saying that, that says something. I do think Dior has a much better shade range. I think they have around nine shades of this. I have the shade zero, so it's perfect for me. This is so beautiful. It does have a really nice pump, which I think is a nice addition for a product like this. And this is great for using as a priming step. It's great to mix in with your foundations. You can also use it to spot highlight if that's what you want to do. I use this two different ways. I use this sometimes as a priming step for those more matte foundations. And I also use it to mix into foundations that are a little bit too deep or too dry and then I mix it together and they become the perfect shade. They become the perfect consistency and finish on my skin. This is so beautiful. This is also very heavily skincare based, so you're getting a lot of really good for your skin ingredients in this product. It's just so beautiful and nourishing and it's not overly glowy like the Charlotte Tilbury sometimes can. I find the Charlotte Tilbury can sometimes have a bit more of a metallic effect it's just so incredibly glowy whereas this one is quite a bit more subtle so it just gives more of that healthy glow from within type of look it's beautiful and this is a product that I will continue to repurchase once I run out of it because I absolutely love this product the next product is also from Dior this is absolutely the year of Dior for me I don't think I've ever been into their products as heavily as I have been this year. So I tried out one of their Rouge Dior Velvet Lipsticks in the shade 221 Fru Fru, and the way that I love this shade, this is like a really beautiful peachy nude shade. So it's got this gorgeous texture to the bullet. It has Dior right here, which I'm probably gonna lose because I wear this so much. This is also a refillable lipstick, so once you use it up, you can just refill the tube and keep the tube. I love this lipstick so much. It is definitely a velvet texture, so it does dry down. It's quite long wearing and it is so incredibly comfortable. And it gives this sort of blurred look to the lips as well and it's not overly drying at all. So I've been absolutely loving these, loving this formula. I didn't want to, but these are just incredibly beautiful, long wearing, comfortable lipsticks and I will eventually add more to my collection. In keeping with the lip products, it's definitely been the year of lip products, not just for me, for a lot of different people, so I don't feel so alone, but Charlotte Tilbury released a Pillow Talk Fair, and this lipstick is gonna be one of my most used of the year, if not of my whole entire collection. It's probably tied with the Dior for how often I've worn it. I love this. I love this because the original Pillow Talk is very beautiful. There is a slight peachiness to it when you compare it to this one. This one is like a true baby pink and it's just so stunning. This is my perfect lipstick shade as a very fair girl and I love it. It is one of those that is not too much. It's never going to be too bold, but it's also in the kissing formula, so it's incredibly nourishing, hydrating, shiny, just absolutely stunning. She also released Icon Baby this year, which was also an absolutely stunning shade, but I don't want to put that in my top favorites because as much as I love the formula, Icon Baby has these gritty glitter particles in it, which I don't like. It is a lot less obvious as you wear the lipstick more, but still 
There's just something about it I don't love. Swatch side by side, it is very, very similar to Pillow Talk Fair, but Icon Baby has the slightest mauve hint to it as compared to this one, but they are very similar shades. But this one is just smooth and shiny and beautiful, hydrating, perfect baby pink. If you're near my skin tone, this is the perfect baby pink lipstick for every day. Another lipstick formula I've absolutely fallen in love with this year is the Makeup by Mario Super Satin Lipsticks. So I don't know why he calls these super satins because they're really more of a cream formula. So I initially purchased Bronx Baby first, which is a beautiful rosy nude formula. It's just, it's beautiful. It is one of the most comfortable, most hydrating lipsticks in my collection. Again, I don't know why he calls them satins because they're just so creamy and nourishing. They're not the most long wearing, but they're such a beautiful formula. They definitely smooth out the lips, make them look so full and hydrated. They're just beautiful. I love the packaging. I love the sleek black tube, the magnetic closure. It's a lot like his original matte formula, but the matte formula can be too drying, whereas these are not at all. I recently also went in store to a Sephora during the sale and picked up another shade in South Shore. I went in just to get my pharmacy cleansing balm and I had to pick up a new shade of the Mario lipsticks. So South Shore is definitely much more of a nude shade. It's almost leaning into the peachy tones a little bit. I think it's really, really pretty, but also just very hydrating, comfortable lipsticks. They're such a beautiful, beautiful formula. So there have been some incredible, incredible lip products coming out this year. I also found the most perfect powder of all time this year. I am somebody with dry skin, but I'm also someone who absolutely hates tacky foundation. So I do like to set my makeup. I always set my under eyes. I do like to set my makeup, but there are very few powders that work really well for someone with very dry skin. In the summer, I'm not as dry, but in the winter, spring, fall, definitely very much so. I love the Charlotte Tilbury powder. I love the Kosas powder. Those are my favorite pressed powders. But there was enough creators I watched that I really respect and trust who said that this was amazing for dry skin. So I picked up the shade 2 Satin Blanc. This is a mini because this is a pricey, pricey powder. The mini retails for 42 Canadian dollars. The full size is $80. I purchased this a month before the Sephora savings event and I considered purchasing a backup during the sale but I think I'm just going to keep using this and if I use it up then I will repurchase next sale. That is still six months and I still have a ton of products so I talked myself out of doing that but this powder is so incredible. This product really gives the illusion of such a beautiful blurred smoothed out under eye area. I also take it down the center of the face. So so beautiful. This has been such a game changer. I also ended up having this awful blemish right here and it's going away now but for a large portion of the month it was this awful awful mess and I would go in with my higher coverage foundations and then a spot conceal and then it was still too much and then I would go down the center of my face with the Givenchy powder and I felt like it camouflaged everything. It was absolutely incredible. It was like my perfect finishing step. My absolute perfect makeup day right now is the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation, the Natasha Denona Concealer, and this powder. And my base is never more flawless. So I have been loving this powder. It's so lightweight. It's not at all too much for my dry skin. It's very, very comfortable, but very blurring, very softening. It's just absolutely stunning. So I've been loving this so much. During the savings event, I also picked up a new shade of the Dior Rosy Glow Blush. I do have the shade Pink that was incredibly viral but I also picked up Rosewood. So this is one that I've been eyeing up since they released this shade extension last year sometime. And this is the one I'm wearing today. I love this shade so much. Definitely a deeper rosy tone, but so, so beautiful. And I'm going through one of those phases where I've tried this. I love it. I don't want to wear anything else. And what I love about the Rosy Glow blushes is I feel like the way they sit on the skin, they sort of just melt in. 
and work with all the other products and they almost end up looking a little bit more like a cream blush than a powder just the way that it melts into the skin and looks super natural and has such a natural finish to it it's such a beautiful blush and this shade I'm absolutely loving. It's far less intimidating on the cheeks than it is in the pan. It was in and out of my cart, but I finally splurged and picked it up and I have no regrets. Speaking of incredible blushes, I also tried from Patrick Ta a new shade of the cream and powder blush duos. I do already have one in She's That Girl, but he did release some new shades and I picked up not too much. Believe me when I tell you, this is another perfect everyday shade for somebody who is very, very fair, if you, again, don't like too much blush, if you are somebody who wants to try the Patrick Ta blushes, but all of his shades have always been so bright and vibrant, this is the answer. The Dior blush is currently sitting top tier, but this is another one that I keep reaching for and absolutely love. I would say the shade honestly looks a little bit similar, but this one is definitely more muted. I like the powder if I'm going for a much more subtle look, but I do love to add the cream on top to lock everything in. The cream definitely adds vibrancy, but if you want to keep it super subtle, just stick with the powder and it is so beautiful. Again, it just blends so beautifully on the skin. And once you set it with that cream, if you choose to do that, this is such a long wearing powder. I forgot to mention that about the Dior. These are incredibly long wearing blushes. I will still have this on tonight when I go to take my makeup off. And when you set this blush with the cream that's in here, same thing. Next is a product from Lancome, and I absolutely love Lancome eye products. I don't know what they do, but that it but aside from skincare and fragrance, eye makeup products are definitely one of their specialties. So this is the Edol Tint Liquid Eyeshadow in the shade 2 Desert Sand. So this is, like I said, a liquid shadow. It does have this really nice teardrop shaped applicator. It's also really thin on the side. I love this because you can really get into those eye contours with the way that this is shaped and it's so beautiful. And even though I have very dry skin, I have very oily eyelids. So if I expect a cream or liquid shadow to last all day long, I absolutely have to set down a powder. I have to do that if I'm using powder shadow or liquid shadow, but I have to set down a primer. That's not an option. But this I can get away with without a primer. I can just put this on the lid, blend around the edges, call it a day, and this actually will stick around all day long. So I have raved about the Give Beauty long wearing mousse shadows, for that same reason and this is the only cream shadow that has matched that so I am very very impressed with this as well I absolutely love it and the last two products are eyeshadow palettes so eyeshadows are definitely one of my very favorite makeup steps and during the savings event I picked up the YSL couture mini clutch quad this is one that I had heard so many people talking about these and I don't often hear incredible things about very expensive eyeshadow quads. So when I heard multiple people raving about these, I knew I had to get them. And I originally wanted Babylon Roses. I still want that one. But that will be a future purchase if I still want it. But I got this one in Store Dolls. And this is like a cool toned sort of brown palette. I have this on my eyes today. So you can see I've created a very, very simple look. I used this one all over the lid and blended into the crease. I topped it with the shimmer shadow and then used this one on the inner corner. If I wanted to, I could have used this deeper one to make a wing or some sort of liner, or I could have just enhanced the outer corner. I didn't really want to. I wanted to keep it simple and I love it. The thing about this formula is that the mattes are really more of a satin, so there is a sheen to them, but they are created in such a way that they're not texture enhancing and they're going to look so beautiful on all different types of eyelids. The shimmer is not chunky. It is a very fine shimmer that just gives such a wet effect to the lids. I think it's so, so pretty. And I do think as well with those satiny mattes, they're really more like a cream to powder formula so they're just very, very easy to work with. And I've been absolutely loving this very, very pricey quad. And the final product is one that I technically purchased in 2023, but I didn't receive until 2024. And this is the Natasha Denona My Mini Dream Palette. This is easily one of my favorite eyeshadow palettes 
of all time. We know Natasha Denona has my very favorite eyeshadow formula in general. Her mini Biba has been a favorite for such a long time as well as her I Need a Nude. This is the My Mini Dream. To me, it's more like a mini I Need a Nude, but it is so stunning. I love the mattes in here. They're so easy to work with. They're such a beautiful neutral tone. And these shimmers are also super stunning. I have such a dent out of this middle one already. And I've used this palette so many times. It looks really beat up for a palette that I only got in January. But I love this palette. This is just another perfect everyday option for me. But that is it for me today. Let me know down below what are some of your favorite makeup purchases of 2024 so far. I love hearing from you guys so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!